So I'm going to reiterate a little bit of what I said. You, you've probably heard on the left-hand side of the chart, this was the only radi electromagnetic radiation that existed. And look, it, it's at 5 to 12 hertz, 12 cycles per second. What's also slightly different, Ed, it was DC. It doesn't alternate like EMF does that has an AC driver for it. And so this is the point it never existed in our environment. And all of a sudden, we now have between 0 and 300 hertz a whole bunch of stuff in our house. We have our um, vacuum cleaner, our, our stove, our refrigerator. Every, everything that's pulling current is emitting emissions on the walls around us, every one. Then we have the radio frequency stuff, as we spoke about in the spectrum, that's between 300 hertz and 300 gigahertz. By the way, the 300 gig is the FCC new defined 5G range, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. But within that space, look at all the devices we have, our Wi-Fi's, our, our, our tablets, our laptops, everything we have around us. And we have refrigerators talking to our tablet app application to see if there's, refri if there's a, a milk in, inside the refrigerator. Uh, do I really need to know I have milk in the refrigerator for my a machine talking to another machine and at the same time emitting something in, in my environment that is detrimental and I won't be able to drink it 10 years from now? So, microwave, at the very bottom, I, I really like to talk about this as the prelude for the next set of charts I'm going to talk about. And that is your, mic, your, um, your router is, works at 2.4 gigahertz. 2.4 billion watt of cycles per second. And your microwave is at 2.3 gigahertz. What happens when you put something in the microwave? The water in between the cells heats up, oscillates the cells. They oscillate so quickly, they cook. Your meat, that's how it works. So when you put a cell phone to your head, you have the identical frequency hitting your head. What is a microwave? It's known as a thermal emitting signal. Thermal. That means at 2.3 gigahertz, science knows when it hits you, it's going to heat you up. So the question is how much? and what long durations do you have to worry about before that happens. And when you use your cell phone, and maybe you, particularly women, I'll tell you that why in a bit. If she said, my hurt, my, my, I'm, I, it's hot. My, my skin is getting hot. Her meat's cooking. It's literally, you feel the energy being ab absorbed within the body, heating up the water between the cells, and it's oscillating. That's what you're feeling. And that's, we'll talk about that. Okay, what do I mean by our environment is getting a completely full uh, of, our, of the emissions in our environment? You gotta understand what the signal actually is. It's an omnidirectional transmission. What that means is it starts at a source, and it starts building out, building out, building out until it gets to the end of it. A router, for example, probably goes 250 feet, 300 feet. Your same omnidirectional signal from your cell phone goes four miles to five miles. So it's going a long way when it starts with your cell phone. It's, it's not it's not isolated either, because now you have someone else in the room. They're transmitting to meet the cell tower. Now you have two transmissions coming out of your room 
into some other foreign connections. Um, nothing is what they call directional. The, the signals today that we have in, in our environment are not directional. They're omnidirectional. So when I'm using my cell phone, I am potentially interfering with Kylan over there. You over here. Both of you are hitting, my, seeing my signals. You're being hit with my signals. So it's omnidirectional. You've got to remember that because that's sort of important discussion as we move on. Okay. When, uh, believe it or not, I, I actually was around the starting of this stuff. And there were analog signals. Um, an analog signal is a constant load. The way the cell looks at it is the constant load. The way the concrete looks at it is the constant load. If I take an elephant or a 10,000 pound load and I put it on top of a piece of concrete through a steel bar, the concrete won't break because it has this constant load and because it's constant, the response of the concrete is not to break. All of a sudden, we started 2G and up to 4G so far. We have an analog carrier, and we have a digital signal inside, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. It's hitting the cell. It's badgering the cell. The cell says, I can't take it anymore. I'm going to break, and that's how the calcium runs through. It's a different signal. We know from research that there are differences in the way we digitize those signals and the impact it has on our cells. So what makes all of this dangerous and more dangerous in time is it's a jackhammer hitting our cell. It's no longer a constant load. That's what makes this a changing game. It's not just the fact it's the frequency that's increasing, although in, in between the cases of 2G and 4G, it's all around one to two gigahertz. We, we really haven't had introduction of anything beyond that yet. 